So hi everyone, uh, my name is uh, Didier Lopsch. Um, I'm not used to be on stage, this is the, the first time I'm doing this, so um, if I speak a bit fast it's not because I have a train to catch, it's because I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> um, today I'm going to talk with you about uh, why proprietary investment research platforms won't last. Um, as I said, my name is Didier, uh, I founded OpenBB and I'm the CEO of the company. Um, OpenBB actually started from a, an open source project uh, called GameStone Terminal. Um, basically, once I started getting into investment research, uh, I felt like there, were, there weren't uh, adequate tools for me out there. So being like a, an engineer, I started developing that in uh, Python. Uh, and I basically started working on a terminal uh, within Python on my spare time. And two months later, I, I released the, the platform. And it went viral on Reddit and on Acker News. And we got published on Vice Magazine. And a couple of months later, we founded OpenBB. We raised 8.5 million on a seed round. And uh, here I am today. So what is the problem of uh, proprietary uh, investment research platforms? I, I can sum it up in basically true, three bullet points. So the first one is, is not customizable. This means that for companies, you can't really add your own, um, you cannot really add your own features to it. It's limited to what the third party wants uh, the, the platform to have because you are li limited on that, on that sense. And by these proprietary investment research platforms, what I mean is the, the Refinitiv, Icons, FactSect, Capital, IQ, Bloomberg's of the world. Um, again, yeah, it's not customizable. Um, it, it also doesn't provide you, no, doesn't allow you to add your own branding on top of it. So if you're like a Goldman Sachs, a JP Morgan, you like to have your branding, you like to have your own tools. And when you uh, uh, pay for these uh, proprietary investment research platforms, you are basically bounded uh, for what they provide. And then there's no distinction between you and your competition. Everyone has the same. And you end up having to build uh, uh, complementary solutions on top of that uh, with, with your branding. And basically, you need to build those because the proprietary platform that you are using Using, doesn't allow you to add, to add that. And finally, it only comes bundled, and this basically means there's no dynamic plan. Usually, you pay for the full thing, regardless of whether you use the platform for only five minutes or, or six hours, or if you use only two features or like all the features that the platform offers. Um, I want to show two quick graphs to show what I'm talking about. So here's company A and company B, and they both uh, use the same proprietary terminal, which is exactly the same. There's no branding. You can't add anything on top. It's just what the, the proprietary terminal company um, gives you. And then you have your own complementary software uh, A for company A and complementary software B for company B, which basically is where you can add your own branding and uh, you can add the features that you would have liked to add on top of proprietary terminal uh, that you are uh, paying for, but you can't because uh, um, it's closed source. Um, and here comes the, um, the, the talk about the, the, these uh, proprietary products being bundled. And as I say, it, it doesn't matter how many features you use or um, how much time you spend on the platform. The pricing is the same, which is really unfortunate. Like in 20, uh, 2022, that you know you don't just pay for what you are using. Okay, so let's go into going further uh, onto the solution. So someone could say, okay, so are you suggesting that we build a, a scratch, um, a platform from scratch? And no, I'm not suggesting that. And the reason is because that's very, very expensive. And at the end of the day, you will be reinventing the wheel because you, it's just, you're going to be doing what uh, everyone has, has, has done. And then there's a lot of uh, uh, money that you will have to use for engineers. They're going to have to relearn the tech stack. It's just not a viable option. So what is the solution uh, uh, here? Um, we are in open source in finance forum, so uh, I, I'm guessing that all of you have heard about open source. There's uh, hundreds of successful companies from uh, Linux, uh, GitLab, uh, Python, uh, successful products like Elastic as well. But one thing that we don't really see a lot is uh, uh, finance commercial products. And why is that, right? Like, we all know the benefits of open source, so why, why can't we do that for investment research platforms? And what I'm really suggesting is, is for companies to start building their investment research platforms on top of well, 
uh, known and maintained open source uh, terminal like architectures and open source excels at infrastructure it's transparent and secure it's fully customizable uh, you can you can create like integrated communities like attract people from every background the best ideas developers from all over the world it's just it's just better overall to build as infrastructure there's also a big validation by having so many people rely on that platform and not just the validation side but people will get familiar with the platform so for instance in academia people could start building that platform and then when they go to find a job in the industry they already know this right and so when you talk about this you know like I'm, I'm sharing, I'm, I mean, I'm biased because <laughs> my company is OpenBB, right? But OpenBB Terminal currently is the only solution that you have in open source that allows you, uh, allows you to do this. But the message here is like any, any sort of, for me, I believe that any sort of open source uh, investment research platform could allow your, your company to build like a better uh, uh, product overall. And uh, Termi uh, OpenBB Terminal is just an example of what you can use. And the image below actually shows like our contributors. We are now uh, last check that we were we are like 98 and this is like a big uh, pool of people right we're not talking about just like developers we're talking about data scientists mathematicians uh, fin finance experts uh, even people with backgrounds such as like physics and biology they are interested in you know retail investors that are interested in developing better tools for for uh, doing investment research and the, the idea is really to have something that is standardized so that everyone understands the standards about it but is customized so you can, you can really take the core of the platform and tweak the endings to make it your own. You can add your own skin, you can add your own hyperparameters to the model, you can add your own capabilities. If you don't like something, you can scrap it. If you want to add more data, you can add more data. It's, the possibilities are limitless when we, when we come to this stage. So now I want to talk a bit about OpenBB. Um, so, you know, all these, these all came together. As I mentioned at the beginning, uh, OpenBB, we raised 8.5 million as a seed round uh, uh, in September last, last year, um, following the open source project GameStone Terminal, which uh, is the one that went viral uh, on the news. Today, we have uh, 12,700 uh, stars, a bit more I checked this morning. <laughs> uh, and uh, our mission is to make investment research effective, powerful, and accessible to everyone. Um, on a shorter version, what we're trying to do is make investment research for everyone and anywhere, right? Um, I want to share with you a bit of what the terminal looks like today. As you can see here is pretty much a, a beta stage yet. Is a, we're talking about the command line interface. Everything is Python end to end. And the reason for it is all, all of you um, that I assume that you're in the finance industry, you are seeing the, the rise of Python in this industry, right? Like, Probably 10 years, 15 years ago, Python wasn't as much used. It was mostly Excel, but now things are changing, right? You see Python being much, much more heavily used because you can uh, create a level of automation that Excel didn't allow you before, or at least as easily, right? And that, that is the, the, the choice we made very early on to start building the, the terminal Python end to end so that we could have everyone that wanted to participate in this tooling to contribute. Because it's Python, it's very easy to learn. Uh, every, uh, people from any type of background, any type of age can very easily add to the platform. And this is where we are right now. So basically what's happening is people are really building what's gonna be like our infrastructure. But the next step for us is gonna be build like a strong user interface so that companies can build off of our project and build their own customized solution, add their own skins and their own data sources. And I'm gonna show the tools that we already have on the terminal in a, in a couple of minutes. Um, so just to give you a bit of an idea about like, okay, what is this 12,700 stars number means, um, which uh, I think is quite impressive when, when we decompose it this way. So there are currently 321 million uh, repositories on GitHub. Uh, GitHub is the place where uh, there are uh, projects open source. Out of those uh, 321 million, there's only 1738 uh, 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 1,738 that are uh, that have more than 12,650 stars, right? And that that corresponds to 0.0005 percent, right? And if we filter further for okay, Python language, so that is very easy for people to to add on MIT li license, which is the most permissive license, and everyone can use it for any type of anything that they want to do with it. And then the final stack, there's only three. 
And, and that corresponds to 0.000009%. And, and I swear that I multiplied by 100, you know, to get the percentage. <laughs> uh, and out of those three, one of them is Plotly, which is actually a sharding library. So it, it's not even uh, anything really related with investment research. Um, on the right side, what you can see is when we search for the investment research tag on, on GitHub platform, um, we can see that uh, in terms of uh, number of stars, we are, we are the top one. And the second one uh, is Microsoft, uh, Q, a product from Microsoft called, called QLib. And we are over 3.5 thousand stars um, above them. So the next question you may ask is, OK, where, what are those people that are staring the project, right? Because when people start the, the project on GitHub, it's mostly like developers, it's communities, it's builders really liking a project. So you may be wondering, OK, these, are these like retail investors, people that cannot afford like better proprietary investment uh, research platforms? And the question is, Yes, in a, in a way, but not only, right? Is, we're not talking about like any sort of retail investors. If we look into the top stargazers in terms of companies, we are looking into like people from uh, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Amazon, Uber, and Airbnb, right? These are the best companies in the world, and they are looking into what we are, we are doing. They are interested to see where the, the, the terminal is going. And at the end of the day, at the position that we are right now, we are really the, the market leader in, the, in this segment because why would you start building an investment research platform like Python-based with, with uh, you know, all that we offer when we already have an uh, open BB terminal which is like, you know, well maintained. There's, there's like multiple pull requests being merged like every day. The, the, the platform moves really, really fast. And the project has uh, uh, almost 100 contributors already. Um, and yeah, this was uh, released, uh, made open source one year and three, four months ago, which is like a very, very fast like rate of development. Okay, so now let's get to the more interesting area. So I talked a bit about um, why a proprietary investment research uh, uh, terminal won't last, in my, in my opinion. I talked a bit about the, the open source, and I talked a bit about OpenBB and about the OpenBB terminal uh, at the very high level, okay? But what is the OpenBB terminal really capable of doing today? And let's dig a bit uh, into that. And I want to start by my favorite one, and, and here I'm gonna tell you a bit what was my, my pain point. So I started um, learning about investment probably like three years ago, and I learned a lot from, for, uh, for doing investment research from Reddit. And I was learning a lot from those posts on Reddit that are like due diligence on Tesla or something similar. And those posts, what, what I could see as an engineer is that those posts had a lot of data that came, from, first of all, they came from different data sources. So I saw that uh, you could see that the shards came from different data sources. And then I really put myself on the perspective of the person writing those posts, right? The, those posts were like really long. This like. There's no way someone could write that in under like two, three hours. And they wrote that, and the week after, that post would like not be valid anymore because things move really fast in the, in the financial markets. And then the other perspective is like, if, if the person wants to look at a different asset, they have to redo the entire post. There's no automation. You could see that everything was manual. But at the end of the day, the only thing that should be really manual is the, the opinion of the person when they look into all that data, right? And for me, like coming as an, as an engineer with like limited time because I had a full-time job, I really wanted to optimize the way I was doing investment research. I didn't want to spend a lot of time, but I wanted to know that the time I spent was, was well spent. And, and at the end of the day, I would go somewhere with that time, whether it was investing on, on a stock or a crypto or whatever. And no tool of, uh, uh, was available for me to create an automation to do that. You know, not even like the most expensive ones. They don't really allow you to do that. So basically, one thing that OpenBB Terminal can do today is it can uh, automate your investment research reports. So basically, we, we are leveraging this library called Paper Mill, which uh, was invented by Netflix. And basically, it allows us to create a template of a report that we are interested to look. And this template report, I'm really saying that we basically just select the type of data that we want to see. So in here, you can see those uh, little tabs. So it says like summary, then we have overview, analyst opinions, fundamental analysis, dark pool and shorts, technical analysis, insider trading, behavioral analysis, even prediction techniques. But you can have anything, and this is like fully customizable. So if you don't care about technical analysis, you can just scrap it. If you care, if you care about uh, uh, more macro level data of economy, you can add it there. Like it's fully customizable. 
And this is really the, the idea, is that I wake up in the morning and I say, okay, run this report for Apple, I go grab a coffee, I come back one minute after and I have a full report after me. And then, this is what, that was the first iteration. And then I was like, okay, this is very good because it saves me a lot of time. I get all these reports in front of me. But I can still do, do better. And for me, the way to do better was by implementing my own rules in terms of what I would like to see in an asset before like investing. So basically what uh, we implemented is this uh, KPI section, or we can call it rules. And this KPI section basically compares like two conditions or three conditions, and if they are satisfied, it appears green. If they are not satisfied, it appears red. And basically, now instead of just running a report, for instance, for Apple, I can wake up in the mo morning, run it for for Apple, Tesla, New, what, whatever uh, uh, ticker, and then when I come back, I just need to look at the rules. And if I look that you know it's mostly green, it means that okay, it passes my set of criteria, so I can dig further and spend time further looking at the data. But if I see that it is too much red, it's like okay, this doesn't pass my basic like criteria, and those criteria are set by by each person individually. So here, as an example, we have like a, a, the a sentiment data coming from uh, FinBrain, which is like one of our data providers. Uh, we have like a regression on the, on the last 30 days of the stock, whether it's going up or going down. Uh, I have RSI level, which is like a technical analysis indicator. But it really shows like what you can do in terms of like automation in the, in the, in the financial world. The next feature that we have is also, I think, a super interesting one. So as a, as a retail investor, um, I felt like the, there are good brokers out there, but one thing that most of them that I've tried lack is a really good uh, understanding of what you're doing in terms of performance of your portfolio. And none of them really offer anything nice. Most of them just tell you, you know, what is the value of your account right now. But that doesn't tell me much as an investor, you know, not coming from the finance background. I want to try to understand how a finance like uh, expert would think about the problem. I want to understand how are my returns coming from? Are they from my crypto assets? Are they from, from my stocks assets? If it's from the stocks asset, which is the sector and the industry? And I want to go further. I want to understand how I can optimize those weights to reduce my risk or, you know, reduce the, the ex exposure that I have to a certain industry or sector. And that's one of the things that uh, uh, our terminal is capable of doing today. The broker's integration is an interesting one because currently what, what I was telling you, this is something that we have available on the terminal. And the, 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 the problem is you need to add it on an Excel spreadsheet. But that was really like just the first stage, right? And now what we're working on is in having broker's integration. So rather than you having to manually insert, OK, I bought Bitcoin at this price on this day, and I paid this fee, and then I bought Apple at this price, blah, blah, blah. You can just connect it with your broker, like whether it's Kraken, Binance, whatever, and you can connect it with your stockbroker and pull the data directly. So we we want to automate like the way users understand their, their, their portfolios like much fa faster in a much faster way. Again, fully customizable. You can add like you know what is relevant to you. You can you can like this is the power of open source really. So when we could talk about this you know portfolio optimization, all the mathematics behind it they are the same regardless of you know company A has to implement it from from scratch B and C they do the same. The, what changes is the the the, the constraints the, the risks that they, they want the, the model to be subject to. But on the open source terminal we can leverage that and allow you to to uh, uh, tune the hyperparameters as you want. One of the other features that we have on, on the terminal, and this one is actually, um, we have someone on our team that joined us from a, from a big uh, fund. And the reason he joined us is uh, this command really attracted his attention because I remember him telling me back, back a couple of months ago saying like, I have friends of mine that do this for a living. What the terminal ca is capable to do is basically build uh, a discount cash flow report um, in a matter of seconds. Um, and these, basically, you can just say, okay, build a discount cash flow model for Apple. You wait a couple of seconds, and you get the full spreadsheet with the, uh, the, you know, the regression of the valuation and whatnot. And the, the powerful thing here is that all the code is open source, so you can see what is the model doing. You can see what are the parameters that we are using. And in this case, we even have one of the, the, the sheets is to make sure that all the calculations are adding up correctly, to make sure that everything is zero in the end. And let's say you don't like Excel and you would prefer to have a PDF report, that's fine. That's something that you can do because the, the code is open source and it just 
like it's just about the the ending whether you push it into like a, a excel spreadsheet or a pdf but the mathematics again behind you know the the fam and french refactor model are going to be the same like uh, uh, anywhere right so Another inter interesting one, uh, this one is actually uh, also like uh, personal to me because of like I'm an engineer and I'm really interested in the fields of AI and machine learning. And one thing that I felt uh, on the financial world that I didn't quite like is that if I go into Udemy, Coursera, any online course and, and people talk about um, data science and the finance, what they do mostly to try to predict a stock price is, is just looking at the past performance of the, the historical data of that asset. But as, as you know, like there's so much more out there, like financial markets move really fast and there's not just the past performance. It can tell you everything, right? There's like, there's news, uh, you have like insider trading, you have um, you know, sentiment analysis of like, you know, people on Twitter or like uh, on Reddit. And there was no platform that allows you to le leverage all of these financial time series. So that's what we're meant to build on uh, on the terminal currently. So basically you can select like, uh, let's say, uh, Bitcoin and you can, or, or Apple, and you can not only select the financial time series of Apple to predict the stock price, but you can add any other type of financial time series on top. And this is any other type of financial time series. We're talking about other assets, uh, other assets. We're talking about alternative data sets. If we're looking at Apple, we can even put like the, the interest on the word like AirPods on Google search, right? Because that's something that, you know, probably you think that it might be related with the sales of Apple, which may impact the stock price. And that's something that we are, we are working on right now, which is you can uh, not only leverage all these data, but then you can tune the model as you want. So you can tune the endings, you can select the amount of, uh, you know, nodes, you can select the amount of layers, you can select which, which neural network model you want to use. And that's really a level of freedom that like I have never seen before. And as an engineer, I'm, I'm super excited about it and a data scientist as well. Another feature that we have is econometrics. Uh, this one's like you are more familiar uh, um, with it than me even I would say. Um, basically statistics for, for finance. Why, why would you every time like build this from scratch on an Excel spreadsheet, why not just leveraging the, the terminal and bring in your own data sets to understanding the, the, the connection between, between any, any sort of variable. And that's something that we already have on the terminal. Next one, again, bringing your own alternative data sets. That's something that the fact that the, the project is open source allows you to do. So you can bring any sort of uh, open source data to, uh, not open source, you can bring any source uh, of data to the platform. So this is an example that someone added last year. So basically, ne Netherlands co uh, COVID rates. And this, uh, I think the person that was looking at this was interested uh, in some uh, um, uh, ticker that was based in the Netherlands. And they thought that there was a connection between the COVID rate in Netherlands and the ticker. So they just, they just implemented these, uh, this feature which allowed them to, to check the COVID rate. And this is just like an example, right? But we can go further. We can add ESG metrics. We can add geographical data. We currently also have like GitHub star. So if the, the company is an open source uh, focused company. So the possibilities here start being like limitless. Open BB API. So the way I see this OpenBB API is basically the, what the terminal is building is really um, a backbone and a strong infrastructure. But on the, the back end, everything that it is is, a, is, an, open, is an API, right? With a, a wrapper of APIs, right? It, it leverages like multiple data sets and then we process it on top and uh, you know, we, we can leverage that. And the example that you are seeing here is that data being uh, leveraged on a Jupyter notebook, which is like ideal for academia or even um, quant developers, right? They can have access to the data, they can transform it, they can play with it, they can test. And this is a very good use case, right? This is something that I personally use, use myself a lot. So you may think, okay, so, but this is only for academia and quant developers, right? And the, the answer is, is no, you can, you can go further with it and you can build cost, custom tools using this API. So this is like 
our next step as OpenBB is, is to have a, a strong enough API so that people can build on top of us and they can build anything that they want. So this is a, a custom dashboard that some contributor added to the platform. And it just displays the cryptocurrency exchange rates to USD in real time. So it's basically like I think every couple of milliseconds like these, these uh, uh, updates. And this is just like a use case, but on the platform we have more. We have like, a, like some options uh, pricing, we have some uh, correlation based on a couple of like metrics, the kind of tickers, and then the, the, when the data comes from to understand you know, how, how things are working out. And, um, and yeah, this is really like what we, what we are set to do, you know, is to build really like this uh, bottom like layer of the infrastructure so that people can, can build on top of. To summarize, um, my point is that I believe that uh, 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 proprietary investment research platforms won't last at some point because of open source. I'm a really, really big believer of open source. Whether it is OpenBB or not, I don't know, but I'm just happy that OpenBB is helping uh, to show the, that there is a, a, a better path. And I just feel like the, the finance industry is, is still playing catch up with everything that is going open source. Because if you look at all like technology, everyone is, is going open source. Microsoft just open source all their, their, their projects. And it's, it's just the future in my, in my perspective. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, here I, I, I'm just like sharing uh, our website and then you can see that you can do slash and you can access like Discord or get our newsletter for updates or GitHub project if you want to, to play with it. And you can like install it and, and try it today for free, uh, a completely free platform. And then you can follow our um, social media. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Um, and, and any questions? Yeah. Um, sorry, can you speak a bit louder? I can't hear you very well. Yeah. How do you do the discounted cash flow analysis in a few seconds? Doesn't it require scraping the data from the report? Yeah, so we are, uh, for, the, for the discounted cash flow, I think we are uh, using data from Yahoo Finance, but our terminal accepts data from other data sources such as IX Cloud, Alpha Vantage, Polygon, and uh, I think there's another one. Uh, but yeah, I think it takes, um, I think it takes around like 50 seconds or so. Um, but yeah, we are basically just you know eating the the endpoint of the the data sources, and then the 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 like the calculations are just streamlined. So it doesn't really matter the data source as long as we get the, that data and is valid. Oh, VMP is the other one, uh, financial modeling prep. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean by more general? Uh, I, I, I guess just different applications of the same software or parts of the software that are applicable to other domains of interest. I mean, you mentioned yeah, so, analysis. Yeah, so I can give you an example, right? When I for those two months, I didn't build everything that I showed you. That wasn't me on the two months, you know? So I actually started just with focus on stocks because for me, that was the main thing. And then what's happened is when I put it open source a couple of uh, uh, weeks after, someone added, for instance, a full Forex menu, you know? So, so I understood that, okay, people want to dig deeper, you know, and now we have like economy, we, we have like a uh, crypto, we have like options. So now we start like leveraging this data because people just start relying on the platform, right? And so it just starts to, to evolve. So the reports that I showed is something that I want I wanted from the beginning. So I implemented that from, from the technology uh, perspective, like the automation, but the, the data that we had before, that was mostly driven by, by the community, right? And that is why uh, for me, it's very important for us to have a strong API and infrastructure so that people can build on top and even features things that we are not even thinking right now. So let's say, because everything is Python right now, you know, which is like super easy to interact with. So let's say someone could come in tomorrow and they can say, okay, I want to leverage the, the platform and be, build a mobile app. Right? And, and this is something that we want to allow people to develop on top because we, we want not to capture value, but create it. We want other people to build on top of our platform. Any other question? Okay, so I think I'll call it a day. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs>